So good morning, everybody. My name is Emmanuel Putier. I am professor of anesthesia and intensive care in Clermont-Ferrand University Hospital in France. And I would like to share this few uh, moments and this occasion um, to address my most sincerely thank to the scientific committee for the invitation to discuss about neuromuscular blocking agents in COVID-19 patients. Here are my conflicts of interest. And as you can see, I think that nothing will uh, influence my, uh, my message. The first uh, point, uh, and as an introduction, I would like to, to discuss um, is that it's probably important to underline that patients with COVID-19 do not all require invasive mechanical ventilation. And this is obviously also the case for patients with severe COVID-19. And I'm quite convinced that most of you have already seen that some patients requiring respiratory support may be successfully treated using NIV and or uh, iflonazan cannulin. And as an example, in the recently published REMAP COVID trial in JAMA this week, it's interesting to consider that almost 40% of patients receiving hydrocortisone did not require intubation and maladies mechanical ventilation at any time. So obviously, as a consequence, and at least for these uh, COVID-19 patients, the question of whether neuromuscular blocking agents should be used or not, obviously, does not apply. The other point I would like to focus on relates on the clinical characteristics of COVID-19 patients with IRDS. And there is accumulating evidence suggesting that, in fact, physiological differences between IRDS from COVID-19 and other causes appear small with lung morphology and respiratory mechanics being very similar to that of more classical IRDS. And this was also found in this other study in which in, similarly to IRDS from other causes, the author found that respiratory mechanics of COVID-19 patients is heterogeneous. Obviously, recruitability is heterogeneous, but Average recruitability is very similar to IRDS from non-COVID etiology. And as a consequence, and at least in my view, but we can obviously discuss it later, it's therefore logical to consider that ventilator strategies that were found beneficial to minimize lung stress and ventilator lung injury should also apply in patients with COVID-19 requiring mechanical ventilation. So what are current recommendation in patients with COVID-19 related areas regarding um, muscle relaxation. As you all know, the Surviving Sepsis Compact Guidelines for COVID-19, published in March uh, this year, issued a weak recommendation to use neuromuscular blocking agent to facilitate protective lung ventilation in COVID-19 patients with moderate to severe ARDS. And to that end, the recommendation is consistent with that of several professional societies' guidelines, including the Surviving Sepsis International Guidelines for Management of Sepsis and Sheptic Stroke, published in 2016. The recommendation is also consistent with the clinical practice guidelines for sustained neuromuscular blocking blockade in the adult critically ill patients, and uh, in which there is a suggestion with a weak recommendation to uh, consider the administration of continuous IV infusion early in the course of ARDS patients, at least for those with a PF ratio lower than 150 millimeter of mercury. These recommendations were mostly based, obviously, um, on these meta-analyses, including the pooled estimates from three randomized controlled trials a total of 431 patients, so a quite small number of patients showing a reduction in 28-day mortality and ICU mortality with a uh, neuromuscular blocking agent infusion as compared with no neuromuscular blocking agent infusion. The results of this uh, meta-analysis were largely supported by findings from the Accuracy's French multicenter double-blind trial in which the use of continuous infusion of cisatracurium for 48 hours in patients with severe ARDS was associated with a reduction in 90-day mortality and also more ventilator-free days in patients allocated to the neuromuscular blocking agent group as compared to those receiving the, the, the placebo. 
So what is also current practice regarding the use of a neuromuscular blocking agent in patients with ARDS and probably the first information supported by findings from the LungSafe International Observational Study is that in fact neuromuscular blocking agents are used sparingly in patients with ARDS. And as you can see in this study overall, 20% of patients received neuromuscular blocking agent. And even in those with the most severe form of injury, neuromuscular blocking agents were administered for a total of 40% of, uh, of patients. The situation seems to be quite different or somewhat different in COVID-19 patients uh, for whom neuromuscular blocking agents appear to be more largely used and the results from the COVID-19 Spanish ICU network study found that adjunctive therapies are commonly uh, applied in fact in COVID-19 patients at least those requiring uh, invasive mechanical ventilation and as you can see in these 742 patients, neuromuscular blocking agents were used in 72% of them and up to 80% of them uh, in case of uh, severe IRDS. Regarding uh, neuromuscular blocking agent utilization in IRDS, it is also important to underline that the results of the accuracy trials was subsequently challenged by the publication in 2019 of the results of the ROSE trial by the PETAL group. And in this study, the use of neuromuscular blocking agent for, eight, for 48 hours sorry, did not influence patient AIDS outcome without statistically significant difference in 90-day mortality. However, it's also important to consider that apart from stopping rule, um, stopping the trial for futility without uh, stopping rule, which in fact renders the rules and quite underpowered study, it should be noted that the, re the use of rescue therapies in these trials and in particular prone position was not standardized. And uh, as you all know, uh, the use of prone positioning is strongly recommended in patients with severe ARDS. And this recommendation is obviously heavily supported by the finding from the PROCEVA trial, in which prone position applied early during the course of patients with severe ARDS was associated with the huge difference in mortality. And interestingly, it also should be noted that in the PROCEVA trial, neuromuscular blocking agents were used in almost all patients since 82% and 91% of patients in the two group received neuromuscular blocking agent for a duration of almost five days. And finally, uh, the recommendation to apply prone position is also supported by the recent surviving sepsis campaign guidelines. Obviously, with a weak, this is a weak recommendation and there is a low quality of evidence. So finally, what are the expected benefits of neuromuscular blocking agent in patients receiving uh, mechanical ventilation? The most common indication for a neuromuscular blocking agent is to facilitate mechanical ventilation. And when appropriately used, it is quite clear that neuromuscular blocking agent will improve chest wall compliance, may reduce airway pressure, and may also prevent respiratory dyssynchrony. And also, we do not have probably enough time to more extensively discuss about that point. There is clearly accumulating evidence suggesting that respiratory dyssynchrony, especially reverse triggering, may be common during mechanical ventilation of ARDS patients, and even in those receiving deep sedation and during controlled mechanical ventilation. And I would encourage you to give a look to the results of a recent multicenter observational study which was just accepted for publication in the chess journal that suggests that reverse triggering may be found in almost one half of mechanically ventilated patients with ARDS not receiving normal blocking agents uh, after intubation. The surviving sepsis campaign guidelines again issued a weak recommendation to use continuous uh, infusion of neuromuscular blocking agent in the event of ventilator dyssynchrony, as is, this is the fact in, in, in case of mechanical ventilation associated with uh, high um, airway and high uh, plateau pressure. The other point is that uh, neuromuscular blocking agent may 
facilitate the use of uh, recruitment maneuvers. And this is especially uh, interesting when we want to avoid inspiratory effort, unwanted inspiratory effort or cause, which may lead to a huge and prompt increase in airway pressure and possible barotrauma during the, the, the maneuver. The other point is that um, the use of neuromuscular blocking agent may also help control ventilation uh, in patients with high respiratory drive, which can be um, also the case in patients suffering from, um, from uh, COVID-19. And also the use of and the early use of ventilatory modes allowing spontaneous, spontaneous bracing is usually recommended as soon as possible, at least in order to prevent diaphragmatic atrophy or to enhance uh, winning from uh, mechanical ventilation. This should be clearly balanced with potential harmful effects. And a high respiratory drive is not a rare condition in patients with ARDS and also in case of COVID-19, for which spontaneous bracing can lead to asynchrony with high tidal volume, even if a low uh, tidal volume, a protective low tidal volume is set on the ventilator, but could also lead to uncontrolled transpinary pressure and possibly to patients' self-inflicted lung injury. And for example, in this uh, elegant cohort study from our colleague from uh, Toulon, including patients with COVID-19 and receiving spontaneous bracing using APRV and PSV modes, the author found that PO1 was frequently above 3.5 cm of water in patients with COVID-19 and even higher than 6 cm of water in a quarter of patients. So we, we have to give a look to uh, um, PO1 and probably to uh, airway driving pressure, to driving pressure, to driving, uh, to respiratory drive, sorry, in, uh, in COVID-19 patients. There are obviously some expected adverse events uh, with the use of neuromuscular blocking agent and um, the use of NMDA has been linked to increased risk of ICU acquired weakness. This concern is probably one of the deterrents of their use in most patients with ARDS. However, uh, the most recent and largest trial to date, in my opinion, which used uh, the, the validated Medical Research Council score, found identical risk of ICU acquired weakness at day 28 and at ICU discharge, whether uh, the patients received or not non-muscular blocking agent. However, even if the risk is low, it is, in my opinion, logical to consider that the shorter duration of use should be uh, obviously considered in these patients. So, as a conclusion, what can be considered for clinical practice? There is probably no logical reason to promote systematic use of neuromuscular blocking agents for all mechanically ventilated patients, whether for COVID-19 patients or for patients suffering from other pathologies requiring um, invasive mechanical ventilation. However, in my opinion again, and we obviously can discuss about it, neuromuscular blocking agents should probably widely envisaged in moderate to severe COVID-19 associated ARDS, especially when prone positioning is indicated in case of excessive airway pressure, excessive plateau pressure, in case of asynchrony, and obviously also to avoid unwanted deep sedation. But in any case, the duration of infusion must be as short as possible in order to avoid possible uh, side effects with the use of this uh, medication. I thank you for your attention.